So I want to talk to you about my first camera that made me money, which coincidentally was also my first camera. And before we get to that, I need to explain the, the context of this. It was 2010, I was doing my master's in physiology in Cardiff, and I was getting a bit bored of science. So I, I went and did a photo shoot and I photographed McFly, who were a band at the time. Um, I did it for a magazine cover for a friend of mine who was double booked, or made some horrific mistake, and. I borrowed a camera from my housemate and I got my friend then who had the job to set all the lights up, set the camera up and all I had to do was point and click. And it went swimmingly well considering. Um, but then sometimes ignorance is bliss and I didn't know what I didn't know. And that was probably quite calming for me. I was like, great, I clicked the button, it all looks good. They did some wicked Photoshop and then the image went to some small magazine somewhere. Um, but that's by the by, I, I got hooked on it straight away. So I did some research being a, you know, a scientist postgraduate. I did a bit of research and I discovered that sensor size is king. And at the time, the 5D Mark I was the camera to get, but it was three and a half thousand pounds and I had about 400 pounds. So that wasn't an option. So what I ended up buying was a Bronica SRI EQS. Let me find out way there. ETRS, there we go. So this, this, is, this is her, um, she's currently rocking a 3D printed winder because I, I lost it. I've got a prism viewfinder. It's a 645 medium format film back. I've got a 75 millimeter lens with an extension tube because I like to get close. And then this cable hanging off it is obviously not a tether cable because it's film. It's a PC sync cable so I can fire my flashes. Let me just pull this part of it. So this is the camera I bought. And the reason I bought it was I couldn't afford full frame but I could afford medium formats. That's the sensor size, that silver bit there. That is how big the bit of film is. And I thought that if I could shoot the film, develop it myself, and then scan it in at the university by sneaking into the photography area, I'd get better image quality, which I did. Now this whole camera's great because it's modular. So the back comes off and you can, at one point I had like six of these and I'd have them loaded with various different films. So if I was out shooting, I could change the film stock I had or the ISO, whatever it may be. Uh, the prism comes off the top, so this is the, the bit you view through. It's basically a poor man's Hasselblad. Um, I guess is the best way to describe it. Or maybe even a poor man's Mimir, not even a... which is a poor man's Hasselblad. And then the lens comes off the front. It's a very simple system. It has a leaf shutter, so you can synchronise flash at all of the shutter speeds, which go to a whopping 500th, and all the way down to 8 seconds. It has an aperture ring on here, and that's it. The light meter has never worked. I got it for £200 and they threw in five rolls of HP4 by Ilford. And it's a pretty basic bit of kit, but I love it. And one of the things I've started recently is using this camera to do some personal work. And the reason is this. I work as a photographer, which is great. It is my hobby. But my work is very stressful and the, the numbers involved in it and the figures involved in it and the money involved in it are very big, which adds its own pressure and weight. And even when I'm doing personal work, it needs to be on brand. So I don't ever get to go, I'm going to go and photograph my cat because I don't have the time to do that. But I'm now making the time. So once a week, I'm going to the dark room with my camera and I'm going to be shooting one roll of film each week developing it, printing it, maybe scanning it if it's colour, unless I can get around to printing colour, and just sort of trying to find that enjoyment in just exploring photography again. And if you want to see more of this, and if you want me to talk you through it and show some maybe behind the scenes and bits of it, and 
let me know in the comments below. I'm not sure if it's of interest or not, but I thought I'd I'd share it with you on this platform anyway, because I don't really have anywhere else to share it with, with it being film and all. But anyway, that is my first camera. And for the £200 I spent on it, I probably made 10 grand. I was shooting headshots, portraits, and this was before film was cool. Film had only just died out. The Canon 5D original was like the camera which made the masses move to digital because suddenly you could get full frame at a affordable price. Um, but I couldn't afford it. And I've always used like community dark rooms. I currently use one called Leicester Lo-Fi, which is based in Leicester, the city where I am. And it's every Wednesday. I think it's like six till nine on a Wednesday evening. So that, that's where I tend to be on my Wednesdays. Um, but yeah, it, it's been a great camera. I've had it, you know, for 12 years. Before that, I've made it in the 80s, I'm guessing. It is cheap, it's affordable. The image quality is amazing. I have shot magazine covers. I have shot editorials. I've sh I shot a billboard on it, I think. It was either on that or on a Mamiya 6.7, but I shot a billboard on one of them in like very recent years before I moved into food. Um, and I was doing portraits and working with musicians and brands like that and fashion work. Um, and it's been a great camera and I would thoroughly recommend if you find that you need that little bit more escapism in your photography because it has become a profession, that this is a great way to go about it because it slows you down. You have to wait, you have to be patient even from like shooting in the day, having no idea if my lighting was right, my exposure was right, getting out to the darkroom in the evening, developing the color film, then having to wait till the following day to be in the studio to then be able to scan it in and see what I've got. And I find that quite enjoyable rather than the instant shoot, view it in capture one, get sign off, move on. And it's a very different pace of life. It's a very different way of working and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I also think it's making my lighting better because I was doing like a, I think I had like five lights out last week and I was lighting it purely with a light meter and using this weird scale that we use, which I can go into detail if you want in another video, but it really helped me. I managed to light it and it came out exactly how I wanted it to, despite not being able to see what it would look like until I developed the film. Anyway, that's my first camera. What was yours? What did you get first? What was the first camera you got and why did you buy it? Let me know in the comments below because I'd love to see. See you later. Bye-bye.